So we have radical 3 over radical 49. And then what do we no notice about the bottom value? It is a what square? A perfect square. So radical 3 cannot be further um, dissected, but radical 49 is how many? And we're done. As long as you don't have a radical on the denominator, you're good to go. So then let's try number two. Number two, we don't have a fraction, but we do want to split it. And I want to split it with a perfect square. What two numbers can I think about? 36 and 2. 36 and 2. And when I look at 36, that is a perfect square of who? 6 and 6. So we have 6 radical 2, and we're good to go. And not that we use a calculator in this class, but if you're ever thinking, hey, do I have the answer correct? There's a way to check. And I'm only going to show this one time. Let's say I have radical 72, oops, radical 72, and I have this ugly decimal, and I want to make sure that my final answer is identical. So when I type in 6 radical 2, it'll be the same ugly decimal, okay? Just in case you want to check. But of course, not on a test. Okay, for example, number 3. I want to only split the second one because the first one is already good to go. So what two numbers, if you were to think of a perfect square? 16 and? Good. So then I see 16 right here. <clears throat> and 16 is perfect square of who? 4. And then what was the rule when I had the same value under the same radical? That number comes out. And that will give us 8. And here's another way to look at it. What is 2 times 32? So the square root of 64 is a perfect square of who? Eight, and we got that, okay? Okay, let's move on to number four. On number four, we have an operation that's not normally on there. We have this plus sign. And I'm gonna actually show, you, um, show this one algebraically. Okay, and I want you to put like a little note on the side. When you are adding or subtracting, there's a rule that you have to apply. It is like combining like terms. Combining like terms. And I'm going to give you an example according to algebra. So back in algebra 1, when you were given 1n plus 3n, what was the final answer? 4n. Did the value of n change? Did not change, correct? So then if I were to apply it here, I'm going to write the understood 1. If I have 1 of the radical 5 plus 3 of the radical 5, I would then have how many of the radical 5? Four radical five. I have students wanting to multiply the radical fives for some reason, but please don't. It's just like combining like terms. Now, if you want to check on the calculator, can you? Type in the original and your new answer. We'll get the exact same one. Okay, what is different about number five then? The inside of the radical is different, correct? So then I need to go ahead and further elaborate the eight. And when I think of eight, I think about two times two times two. Yes, you may say 4 times 2. And if I were to um, combine, first let's copy 7 radical 2 minus. I know this 2 is going to come out. But then, don't I already have the original 2 from the beginning? And then this radical 2 stays inside. So I have 7 radical 2 minus 4 radical 2. So how many radical 2s do I have? Good. All right, questions on that one. Okay, number six becomes kind of redundant, but I want you to try number seven with a partner. Go. If you want to do number six, go for it. Should all end up with radical 
Okay, are we okay with how I split the radical 200 and radical 72? Yes? So then, this 100 is a perfect square of 10. So I'm going to write out 10. But we already had a number outside, so I'm not going to change that. And the radical 2. The second one is already in terms of radical 2, so I'm not going to change it. And then we have <clears throat> minus, what is our perfect square of radi radical 36? Six, and we already had the existing whole number that I can't change, then there's my radical two. And then multiply the parts you can. What is 10 times five? 50, radical two, plus three radical two. And what is six times five? 30 radical two. So if I take 50 radical two plus three radical two minus 30 radical two, that's gonna end up with how many? Mm -hmm. 23 radical two. So if you had this, go ahead and give your neighbor a high five and say, good job. Good. Good. Is that it? Yes, that is. I have <clears throat> I have that. All right. Moving on to the back, I want to go on to example number nine. So there's an operation called rationalizing. So I want you to write out rationalize. And the word rationalize basically means if you have a radical on the bottom, that's considered not proper, meaning it's not simplified all the way. So what you would have to do is, this is not good, let's rewrite that problem. So I have two over radical three. And what you do is, you take whatever's on the bottom and put that on the top and the bottom repeated. And let's see what would happen on the top. There's nothing I can do on the top, leave it side by side. On the bottom, when I have a radical three and another radical three, because they're identical, what number pops out? Three. Boom, done. If you wanna say radical nine, and then that ends up being three as a whole number, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So let's apply that rule. So on number 10, what is not good? The radical two on the bottom. So we have to do something called the what? Rationalize, and rationalizing basically means whatever we don't like has to be repeated on the top and the bottom, and then we compute. But the top four radical two cannot be further simplified. What can I do about the bottom? <clears throat> what pops out? Two. two. And then you have to ask yourself the following. Can the whole numbers be further simplified? What is four divided by two? So it's two radical two. Okay, let's go on to number 11. Which radical do I not like? The top or the bottom of the fraction? Just the bottom. So we have radical five on the top and the bottom. Now on the top, don't I have two, di two different radicals? So let's go ahead and multiply them. What is seven times five? 35. Over, now radical five and radical five, what pops out? 
five. Here is a common mistake. This is my final answer. But I've seen students do the following. They go, hey, I see a 35 and a five. Can I simplify that? No. One's a whole number, the other one's a radical. They're two different numbers, so you cannot. So then I want you to do example 14 with the partner. Is that my final answer? What part can I simplify? So we know nine's a whole number. Three is also a whole number. So nine divided by three is how many? <clears throat> so we have three radical 24. But then we have to ask ourselves something else. Can 24 be further split to where I could have a pair of numbers that are identical? Okay, I, I hear a yes. So let's see, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna write radical 24 right here. I like the 12, but I like this one better. Six and radical four. If I further split the six, is that going to help us at all? Nope. But we do know the four is a perfect square of who? So I'm gonna write out three times two, radical six, which in the end is six radical six. Okay. 